The sad truth is, the vast majority of people who attempt a diet to lose fat, they fail. What? But what I've found both in the literature and with helping thousands of people successfully transform their bodies is there's four things that if people just simply knew before dieting would greatly increase their chance of success. Today we're going to reveal what those are and how you can use them to your advantage. So most people are unaware that not all body fat is created equally. Within our fat cells are two receptors, alpha and beta receptors. You're soon going to remember them as alpha for awful and beta for beautiful. This is because alpha receptors, they tell our body to store fat rather than burn it. Whereas beta receptors, they do the opposite and encourage fat to be burned off for energy. So where in the body do we have the highest density of these awful alpha receptors? Well, for males to protect our internal organs, we have the highest density within our belly fat and our love handles. For women, for childbearing purposes, it tends to be around the hips and waist. This is what makes these areas so stubborn to lose fat from, yet unfortunately is also where most of us starting a diet want to lose fat from first. The belly fat a lot of times is the last thing to go and just all this stuff. I, I was seeing myself gradually lose fat in certain areas and I still saw like my belly or like I would still see like the stubborn fat in my stomach be there. Man, if I don't see like eight pack abs in like two months and I'm like been over 25% body fat for like the last three years, then I'm gonna quit. Which then leads many of us to question, is there a shortcut to burning off fat from these stubborn areas? For example, can abs exercises be used to spot reduce fat from stubborn areas like the belly? Well, a 2011 paper tested just that and found that six weeks of direct ab training five days a week had no effect on reducing belly fat in overweight subjects. In fact, there's been studies that have tested all the most popular solutions to losing stubborn fat that even I've tried out in the past in hopes of a shortcut. Despite the proposed theories behind these methods, studies have consistently found that no, avoiding carbs past 6 p.m. is not gonna help. No, early morning fasted cardio won't help. No, there aren't any special foods or unique diets that can help target these areas and no high intensity cardio workouts won't help either. So if that all doesn't work, then what does? Well, there is a method that I've found and successfully tested with thousands of the members of our Built With Science program. Here's Archie. He applied this and successfully lost his belly fat and love handles. And here's Katie, who did the same to lose her fat from her most stubborn areas. And here's two more examples from Kevin and Dominico, who lost it by applying this one thing. And this one thing that was key to their success is actually something that you all have with you right now, but just haven't properly applied it. What is it? Well, I'm gonna let one of our members, Archie, reveal it for you. It was like eight months mm -hmm. um, of time, like just going and going. And so even in like four months in where I was like, dang it, bro, what the heck is going on? It could have happened that way, you know? It could have been like four or five, even six, seven, right before I really started to see like my abs start to pop trust the process and just stay consistent and you will see those results if you just continue to go. So realize that only once you've lost enough fat cells from other areas of the body will your body then start focusing on burning off your more stubborn fat cells for energy. In the meantime, embrace the other changes you're experiencing that most people overlook. So when most people go into a diet, they expect their weight loss to look something like this. A steady rate of weight being lost every single week. But take a look at the one year weight loss graph of one of our Built With Science program members, James. See all the ups and downs? The reality is, depending on how much you've had to eat, whether or not you've used a washroom, how hydrated you are, or some combination of all of the above, your weight will vary up to about five pounds day to day. Scales and weights will fluctuate all the time and mine did. If you're seeing your weight go up one day and then down one day and then up one day and you're like, well, what am I doing? right, what am I doing wrong? To account for this, we recommend all of our Built With Science clients to weigh themselves every single day using the same scale first thing in the morning after they've used the washroom but before they eat or drink anything. If you apply this, you're still gonna see some variation but it won't be as big. Then, to improve this even further, there is something that we emphasize with all of our clients. But it took me a while to realize, all right, let's try and look at this over kind of a trending fashion rather than this is what I am day to day to day and try and measure it on that because you're just going to drive yourself crazy. Mine was definitely looking at kind of week by week how it was going, especially in the later stages of 
losing weight. In the first few weeks, you're gonna notice a big drop from losing mostly water weight. From then on, it should still trend downwards, just not as fast. But be prepared for periods of two to three weeks where your weight just doesn't budge or may even increase. This is completely normal. When this happens, it's important that you remain patient and keep your stress levels low rather than doing anything crazy or coming to the conclusion that what you're doing isn't working. In the event that your weekly weight hasn't budged for at least three to four weeks, then that's a sign that it may be a good time to finally change something up. Although most of you watching will say you want to lose weight, what you actually mean is you want to lose fat. This is a really important distinction. If decreasing the number you see on the scale is your only goal, you can achieve this pretty quickly by eating very little food and doing a ton of cardio. The problem with this approach though is it won't leave you looking the way that you want. This is because weight is made up of both fat and muscle. Although the very low calorie, high cardio approach is gonna help you lose weight quickly, most of the weight you do lose is going to be muscle rather than fat. The result, pretty much just a smaller, skinnier version of you, but with some of the negative side effects of muscle loss, such as fatigue and hunger. To look and feel the way that you really want, you need to lose fat while preserving or even building as much muscle as you can in the process. To ensure that this happens as you lose weight, there are a few things that you can do. First off, as I've covered in past videos, you wanna focus on slow, gradual weight loss. Losing no more than 1% of your body weight per week while also lifting weights regularly. But aside from this, there is one thing that seems to be increasingly important, especially with new research emerging. So what we did in our study in my lab was we had resistance trained females and we had, we split them into two groups. One group, we had them increase their daily protein intake and the other group we had decreased their daily protein intake. So both groups were naturally eating about 0.7 grams per pound the low group, we said you have to decrease it. They ended up going all the way down to 0.4 grams of protein per pound of body weight. The high protein group increased their protein all the way up to 1.1 grams per pound of body weight. And at the end of the eight weeks, the group that increased their protein intake caused an increase in muscle mass and a little bit of a decrease in fat mass as well. What made this study really interesting is when we look at the total calorie intake. So the high protein group, yes, they increased their total protein, but that also resulted in them increasing their total calories. They increased total calories by about 250 calories per day. Now, normally when you increase calories, you think you're going to gain body fat, but that's not what happened. They actually had a significant loss of body fat compared to their baseline levels. And remember, they increased their calories all in the form of protein. The other group that decreased their protein intake, they also had a decrease in total calories. Now, normally you would think, well, you would lose body fat in that case, but they didn't. So there's something unique about the protein content here that also contributed to the changes in their body despite increasing calories or decreasing calories. So how do we apply this to the, to the everyday user of protein supplement or protein intake? What we suggest is if you can increase your protein and you don't have to go to 1.1 grams per pound, if you can just increase from where you're currently at, I believe that you will get a body composition benefit. But if you can, if you can reach that gram per pound or even more, I think that you get more and more of a benefit. So we've been talking a lot about weight and even went through the importance of weighing yourself consistently. But the weight scale doesn't reveal all. And it can get extremely frustrating when you're doing everything right, but it just doesn't seem to budge. This is why you need to look at other measures of progress. Our team of Built Science coaches have every single one of our clients not only weigh themselves regularly, but also take progress pictures, keep track of their strength during their workouts, track their waist circumference, and monitor their physiological changes. The good thing for me was measuring other things like my strength. I may be plateauing with my weight loss. I may be the same as I was maybe a month or two ago, but my strength has actually gotten quite a bit better. If, for example, your waist size is decreasing, you're feeling more energized than normal, and you're making positive changes with your habits, then trust that you're moving in the right direction regardless of what that number on the scale tells you. Guys, I can't stress how important it is that you set up your diet optimally from the beginning, and equally as important to know what to measure. 
That's exactly why within our Built With Science programs, we've not only created powerful custom tools for you to track your progress, but we've also designed them to automatically adjust the plan for you in the event that your progress slows down. It's been the key to the thousands of transformations our members have experienced. To get access today, just simply head on over to builtwithscience.com and take our analysis quiz to discover what approach is best for you and your body. Anyways, that is it for today, guys. Don't forget to show your support by giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.